Good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for having me. Um, incredibly honored to be here. Mayor, that was a very gracious introduction. You've done a great job in this community, and it's high time that I got to West Long Branch to hang out with you, so thank you so much for that. I want to also thank the superintendent, Dr. Christina Egan, who just conducted an extraordinary tour with the commissioner and myself. Um, we'll be hearing more from Christina uh, shortly. Uh, director of the aforementioned uh, of special services, Lolita Yacono. Lolita, where'd you end up? Is it, 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 it can't be true, but you, I'm told Lolita's been, has been doing this for 44 years. We've got to give Lolita. <laughs> that is really, really incredible. God bless you. Principal James Earhart, Mr. I do, when, a, when I'm in a school, I do what the principal tells me to do. So if, if I get out of line, let me know. And I want to also welcome all the educators, staff, especially the kids from Betty McKelman Elementary School. Um, I also want to thank, because they were really good to us, um, Mrs. Miles and Mrs. Broner for welcoming uh, our acting education commissioner, Dr. Angelica Allen McMillan, and me into their classroom this morning to spend some time with and to learn right alongside some incredible young people. I have a new appreciation for color, <laughs> mothers versus children, and other assorted uh, um, lessons. Before I, I go on, I have to note, and by the way, I know this not just because my team told me this, my oldest son, Josh, told me this, and that is that this is uh, McKelman Elementary's Spirit Week. and. The theme for the week is the week of respect, and today is Team Jersey Day. Uh, and I, I frankly wish I had come a little bit more appropriately dressed, speaking of wardrobe malfunctions. Um, but for kids, uh, earning to respect each other's differences can be as simple as learning to respect their choices of sports teams um, and the teams that they root for, and that we could be competitors on the field but friends off of it. And I think that's a terrific lesson to learn, and I'm pleased to see this lesson in action. The reason my son told me uh, FC Dutchman is a big soccer team that has a huge presence in West Long Branch, and he's been associated with that, so for many reasons I'm thrilled to be here. Uh, and by the way, we had one Packers jersey and one Giants jersey, and I noted that they were facing off this Sunday in London, so a little bit more. Uh, I gave her a hug a minute ago, but I'm incredibly honored as well that we're joined by the Senate Majority Leader, Teresa, Senator Teresa Ruiz, who is a true champion of education, period, and of preschool education. And, and Senator Ruiz is also the former chair of the uh, Senate Education Committee, and so she comes by this with great experience. Uh, Donna Chair is in the house. Donna, great to have you president of the American Federation of Teachers in New Jersey. And to you and all your fellow educators, bless you. I said to Donna, I didn't recognize her without her camera, uh, and she solved that riddle for me. So uh, as the mayor mentioned, we are here today to help inaugurate, although a few weeks into the school year, this new class of pre-K learning here in West Long Branch. And these children, full day, by the way, very importantly, these children are among the more than 2,100 three- and four-year-olds in 27 districts statewide who now have access to free, full-day pre-K thanks to the state budget's investment of $26 million in pre-K expansion aid. And this is a critical part of the budget that we enacted with the help as I mentioned, of not just the majority leader who's with us today, but the Senate President, Nick Scuteri, the Assembly Speaker, Craig Coughlin, uh, and their respective colleagues, including a guy who wanted to be here today and could not, uh, and this is in his backyard, Education Committee Chair, Senator Vingo Paul, uh, who again hails from here in the 11th District. And I also want to give a shout out to Assemblywoman Pam Lampett, um, and all of them were incredibly instrumental. And to be sure, by the way, this is, a, this is a good opportunity for me to look to the cameras and spread the word. There is still a remaining $14 million in available expansion aid in this very year. The department under Angelica's leadership is currently working with those districts who may not have been part of the initial awards, awards to boost their applications so they can get in on the second tranche of funding. Districts that did not apply in the first round but would like to open a program 
for the second half of the 2023 school year will also have an opportunity to apply for the remaining funds. We do not, I know I can speak for the commissioner, the majority leader, everybody associated with this, we do not intend for this money to sit idle. We do intend for it to go to work educating the next generation. So the budget that I signed and proudly signed continues us along the path that we began to blaze five years ago, a path on which we have increased public pre-K funding by more than $310 million from when we began increasing the number of pre-K classroom seats. And now we've increased those seats by a total of 18,000. So it's $310 million, 18,000 precious little kids who are in full day pre-K in New Jersey. None of that uh, was a reality five years ago. <laughs> Shamelessly fishing for applause. <laughs> Today, through our efforts, we have expanded access to free, full-day, high-quality pre-K programming in every single county, and roughly one in three of New Jersey's estimated 210,000 pre-K eligible students now have a seat waiting for them, paid for by us. Moreover, we are committed to remaining on this path and moving toward our goal of achieving universal access to free, full-day, high-quality pre-K programming for every single young learner in our state. More on that in a moment, if I may. Let me back up and acknowledge, I think that there are at least three compelling reasons why we have remained so focused on this effort. First, high quality pre-K programs are critical to making New Jersey an even more affordable place to raise a, a family. Um, we, Christ, Christina and I had that sidebar conversation in the classroom a few minutes ago. Access to pre-K makes great communities more attractive to and affordable for young working families by removing one of their growing financial barriers, the cost of childcare. It is of particular importance to the working mothers who shoulder an increasingly unbalanced burden and have especially over the past two years during this pandemic in trying to achieve a proper work-life balance. I also said to Christina, you see this now, we don't have universal pre-K yet, but we will. I think we're going to have the roadmap um, ready for dissemination after public commentary uh, by uh, sometime in uh, 2023. But until we get universal pre-K, there is this extraordinary phenomenon, and, and Mayor West Long Branch, I think, uh, will either is experiencing this or will, and that is it becomes a magnet for young families, either couples expecting to raise a family or couples with young kids to come into those communities and either buy a home or rent a home in those communities. I probably need not tell you that, but it's an it's a incredible correlation between free, full-day K, full day pre-K and what housing values look like in those communities, never mind the affordability uh, burden that is lifted. Secondly, we know that a high quality pre-K program is the strongest possible way to start a child on a path toward higher achievement with benefits that follow them throughout their education and across their lives and which positively impact the entire community. And then third, the investments that we make in pre-K are returned back to us many times over. The National Forum on Early Childhood Policy and Programs, not, not exactly a title that rolls off the tongue, but they have estimated that every dollar that we invest in our children at the very beginning can pay us back many times over throughout their lives with a return of up to $9 for every $1 that we invest. Very compelling by any measure. It was a little more than a year ago that I announced New Jersey's intention to become the first state to achieve true universal access to free, high quality pre-K for every single ch child. Now, as much as I or anyone else would like, this certainly cannot happen. It does not happen overnight. And it certainly can happen without careful planning to ensure that state investments can be secured and sustained and that the local educational foundations are strong and set so that promises made to parents 
can be promises kept. So over the past year, my office under Angelica's leadership, the Department of Education in close consultation with legislative leaders have been directly engaged with the National Institute for Institute for Early Education at Rutgers University, let's go Rutgers, to game out the different ways in which we can reach this goal. Today, their preliminary report, preliminary report setting out the means for building the foundation for deliverable and sustainable universal pre-K is actually being released as we speak. Again, that's the preliminary report. The final roadmap will be sometime in 2023. Our teams collectively, along with the great team over at the National Institute for Early Education at Rutgers have looked at everything we need to scale up our pre-K system to being a universal standard. And some of the elements, some of the moving parts that are incredibly essential, and you won't be surprised by them, from potential funding scenarios to the type of workforce that we need to foster and from the facility needs in our public education system and to how and ultimately to how best to strengthening existing partnerships with organizations like Head Start and other locally based child care and early education providers. Angelica, I think, will back me up, as will Teresa and others. Part of the reason why some communities don't yet qualify uh, for the pre-K expansion or funding are very simple ones, like they don't have the facilities uh, available. So that's why this has got to be, to pick one example, that's got to be part of that, of that roadmap. And by the way, I might add such partnerships um, in, in, with organizations like local child care and early education providers or Head Start, I must add, that's how West Long Branch and other school districts can meet their goal of providing high quality full day pre-K for its youngest learners. It's not just here at BME, but at Head Start and private preschool providers uh, borough-wide as well. But today, our focus is on this extraordinary school and on the children we just visited, whose educational journeys are able to begin here and now because we work together to deliver for them and for this community. It's a funny thing. A budget in and of itself is a whole lot of pages, a whole lot of numbers, and the only thing that jumps out at you in some cases is my signatures on the last page. But when you walk into a classroom as we just did and you feel the energy of these children and their educators, by the way, we have the number one public education system in America and it begins with the best educators in America. So when you feel, when you feel that energy from the kids, from the educators, the leadership, the, the staff, whether it be superintendents, principals, others, you also feel the promise that a budget holds, and that is a very, very powerful thing. It is a reminder of why we all do this, frankly, in the first place. From those of us in public office to the folks in the classroom, we do it to make a difference in the lives of New Jerseyans and in the future of our entire state. It is truly a humbling feeling, one like a love of learning that never gets old. Again, thank you so much for having me this morning. I can't tell you how thrilled I am to be here. Please help me welcome the aforementioned Acting Education Commissioner, Dr. Angelica Allen McMillan. <laughs>